Welcome to this quick start tutorial where we're going to model a two-dimensional wood truss. As we start our truss model, we have to think about these four characteristics. The member elements we're going to use, the geometry, which is defined by nodes, the external supports or boundary conditions, and how the members connect to each other. We'll look at each of these as we create our truss. Every visual analysis model is a space frame, and the tooltip gives you some ideas about how to do two dimensions, which is really easy. We're going to make sure the draw members mode is on so that when we drag our mouse as we sketch this bottom cord, uh, we're creating a member element. I'm just going to zoom and pan here so my structure is kind of easy to create with the grid lines. And now I'm just connecting the dots to draw in the outside boundary of my truss. Each member element goes from grid point to grid point or node to node. Generally, you want to pay attention to the direction you draw your members so that you're consistent. Some members aren't up or down, back or right because uh, that will affect their orientation and, and other um, properties. Here we're trying to draw a 45 degree member and we don't have a grid point right on our top cord, so I'm using a little trick to draw that member past uh, the top cord and now I'm going to split the member at the intersection and I can select this node and delete it to uh, remove the excess member. So now our geometry is complete our next step is to define some of the member properties. All the members by default were this 4x12 standard lumber, and I'm going to change the web members to be a little bit smaller shape. Material properties are set in a similar way. Now let's make these web members simply connected, that is no moment transfer uh, at the joint. I can do that with a connection type or by just setting the releases specifically at each end. The picture view lets us see our shapes and the materials, and so we can quickly verify that we have what we think we have. Now let's move on to define the external supports. This is what holds our truss up, and we're going to use two pin supports at each end. And now that that's done, let's see if we have analysis results. Okay, we're not quite stable because we forgot that this thing is really a 3D model and we have to worry about rotations out of plane. So let's spin the view so we can see what's going on here. And I'm going to turn off this grid for some clarity. And I'm going to shift click a node so I can select them all. Whoops, got a member. Shift click a node and now I can set external supports in the out-of-plane Z direction on every single node, and that will give us really nice out-of-plane stability against rotation and translation. And that's it. We have analysis results for our self-weight. That's the end of modeling, part one. Next up, we'll load this truss. Thanks for watching.